This is the worst. Let's take a look at the top 10 largest bankruptcies ever. These corporations scaled the heights of American commerce and were called too big to fail, only to come crashing down in spectacular style. Starting with number 10, Conseco. An Indiana-based company, Conseco was once considered a Wall Street darling. Founded in 1979, Conseco grew quickly, making the Fortune 500 list just 10 years later. However, their aggressive acquisition strategy, which included purchasing mobile home lender Green Tree Financial, led them down a precarious path. The company's troubles began to unravel in 2002. The previously acquired Green Tree's loans began to default at an alarming rate, and the financial burden for Conseco was too much to bear. Facing mounting losses and a debt load in the billions of dollars, Conseco filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in December 2002. At the time of filing, Conseco reported assets of $61.39 billion, making it one of the largest bankruptcies in U.S. history. Coming in at number 9, Enron. Enron was a Houston-based energy trading and utility company, a company whose name has become synonymous with corporate fraud and bankruptcy. With a peak valuation of $70 billion and stocks trading at an all-time high of $90.75, Enron was the seventh largest corporation in the U.S. However, the company's success was an illusion, a mirage created by one of the most notorious accounting frauds in history. Enron's fall from grace began in 2001 when the energy trading giant was hemorrhaging money. Amidst these early signs of trouble, Sharon Watkins, a vice president for Enron, raised concerns about the company's accounting practices, but her worries were brushed aside. By October 2001, Enron reported a third quarter loss of $618 million and and announced that it would need to restate its financial statements from 1997 to 2000 to correct accounting violations. The final nail in Enron's coffin came on November 28, 2001, when credit rating agencies downgraded Enron's credit rating to junk status. The company's stock price plummeted to a mere 61 cents per share. An attempted merger with energy company Dynagy fell through, and by December 2nd, Enron had no choice but to file for bankruptcy. At the time of filing, Enron's bankruptcy was the largest in U.S. history, which reportedly included $65.5 billion of assets. Moving on to number 8 on our list, the CIT Group. Despite its long-standing presence as a lender to small and medium-sized businesses and a history that spans over a century, the global credit crisis and the economic recession led CIT to file for bankruptcy in 2009, making it one of the largest bankruptcies in U.S. corporate history. CIT's downfall was a significant blow to the economy, as it removed yet another source of capital for small businesses. The bankruptcy also resulted in a substantial loss for the U.S. government, which had invested $2.33 billion in CIT through the Troubled Asset Relief Program. This loss is among the biggest yet for the program, demonstrating the depths of CIT's financial troubles. However, CIT's operating subsidiaries, including CIT Bank, were not included in the bankruptcy filing, allowing them to continue operations. In an effort to navigate through its financial turmoil, CIT aimed to reduce its total debt by about $10 billion in bankruptcy. By mid-2009, the company had $71 billion of assets when it filed for bankruptcy. Now at lucky number seven, or should we say unlucky number seven, Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Better known as PG&E and one of the largest combined natural gas and electric energy companies in the United States, the California-based utility company's bankruptcy filing in 2019 was a shockwave that resonated throughout the entire energy sector. PG&E's problems largely stemmed from a series of devastating wildfires that ravaged California in 2017 and 2018. The company's equipment was found to be the cause of several of these fires, leaving PG&E with potential liabilities estimated at $30 billion. The company's financial woes were exacerbated by the unique nature of California's inverse condemnation law, which holds utilities liable for any fires caused by their equipment, regardless of negligence. Facing an avalanche of lawsuits and claims, PG&E was left with no choice but to seek protection from its creditors. In January 2019, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, listing assets of $71.39 billion. This was not the first time that PG&E had filed for bankruptcy. 
The company had previously filed for Chapter 11 in 2001 following the California electricity crisis. However, the 2019 filing was of a different magnitude, given the scale of the liabilities faced by the company. Unlucky number 7 indeed. Take a quick second to smash that subscribe button. It's easy, and there's no forms to fill out. Now, at number 6, an American automotive giant, General Motors. GM's bankruptcy filing in 2009 was a severe blow to the American auto industry and a stark symbol of the global financial crisis. GM's problems were sown long before 2009, though. The company had been struggling with the declining market share, high labor costs, and an unsustainable debt load for years. By the time the financial crisis hit in 2008, GM was already on shaky ground. Sales plummeted as consumers tightened their belts and banks tightened their lending standards. By the end of the year, GM was burning through cash at an alarming rate and facing a liquidity crisis. In November 2008, GM and its fellow Detroit automakers Chrysler and Ford went to Congress seeking a bailout to avoid bankruptcy. However, the bailout was initially rejected, and GM was left teetering on the brink of collapse. Finally, in June 2009, GM filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The company reported $82.29 billion in assets and a staggering $172.81 billion in debt, making it the sixth largest bankruptcy in U.S. history. The U.S. government stepped in with a $49.5 billion bailout in exchange for a 60% equity stake in the company. The bankruptcy process allowed GM to shed many of its debts, renegotiate its labor contracts, and close hundreds of underperforming dealerships. Today, after a painful restructuring and a return to profitability, GM is once again a major player in the global auto industry. However, the memory of its 2009 bankruptcy serves as a sobering reminder of how even the mightiest can fall. Landing at number 5, we have WorldCom Inc. This once high-flying telecommunications giant found itself at the epicenter of a corporate scandal that shook the business world to its core. Founded in 1983, WorldCom was once the second largest long-distance phone company in the US. But beneath the surface of this telecom titan was an intricate web of financial fraud that would ultimately lead to its downfall. In 2002, an internal audit uncovered $3.8 billion in fraudulent accounts, a figure that would eventually swell to $11 billion. The fraud was masterminded by CEO Bernard Ebers and CFO Scott Sullivan, who were inflating the company's assets to keep its stock price high. The fallout from the scandal was immediate and far-reaching. Confidence in corporate America was shattered, and stricter regulations were swiftly implemented. In July 2002, with its stock price in free fall and its debts going up, WorldCom filed for bankruptcy. At the time, the company reported $103.91 billion in assets, making it the largest bankruptcy in U.S. history until that point. Taking the fourth spot is Signature Bank. Once a titan in New York's real estate lending sector, this financial institution met an untimely end, sending shockwaves through the financial world. Founded in 2001, Signature Bank swiftly rose through the ranks to become the 19th largest bank in the United States. With assets worth $110.36 billion and $88.59 billion in deposits as of December 2022, but a high-stakes game in a volatile sector would ultimately lead to its downfall. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in early 2023 sparked panic among Signature Bank's depositors, triggering a bank run. The realization that a high percentage of their deposits were uninsured fueled the panic, leading to an exodus of funds. Despite regulators' efforts to seize the bank and protect depositors, the damage was done. The bank, once a pillar of New York's real estate lending scene, was brought to its knees. The postmortem report by the FDIC, or Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, laid bare the reasons behind the collapse. Poor management, a failure to understand the risks of its concentration in the crypto sector, and a lack of liquidity management were identified as the primary causes. The fall of Signature Bank just days after, spoiler alert, Silicon Valley Bank's collapse sent chills through the financial world. Keeping with the bank theme, at third is SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. The high-profile collapse of SVB Financial Group. A titan in the banking sector, SVB Financial's downfall shocked the industry and added to the prevailing banking turmoil. 
SVB Financial Group, the parent company of Silicon Valley Bank, was a major player in the banking industry. However, a series of events led to a dramatic reversal of its fortunes in 2023. The tremors started when Silicon Valley Bank, its former unit, was taken over by U.S. regulators. The bank was forced to sell a portfolio of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities to Goldman Sachs at a staggering loss of $1.8 billion due to a rise in yields. Attempts to raise funds were met with panic, leading to a single-day outflow of $42 billion. The ripples of this failure were felt across the banking sector, with financial stocks losing billions of dollars in value. Confidence in the banking sector was severely shaken, leading to concerns about a potential financial contagion. In response to this crisis, SVB Financial Group filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, seeking court-supervised reorganization and buyers for its assets. This marked one of the largest collapses since the infamous financial crisis of 2008. At the end of the previous year, SVB Financial had reported $209 billion in assets. The bankruptcy proceedings excluded SVB Securities and SVB Capital's funds, which the company intended to evaluate for strategic alternatives. SVB Financial's fall from grace serves as a harsh reminder of the volatility and risk inherent in the financial industry, particularly during times of economic stress. And taking the second spot, Washington Mutual. It's a name that's synonymous with the 2008 financial crisis, Washington Mutual. This was a seismic event, the fallout of which reshaped the American banking landscape. Washington Mutual, also known as WAMU, was the largest savings and loan association in the U.S. Founded in 1889, it had survived the Great Depression, two world wars, and numerous financial downturns. However, it couldn't withstand the tidal wave of the 2008 financial crisis. WAMU had heavily involved itself in the subprime mortgage market, selling risky loan products to thousands of customers. When the housing bubble burst in 2007, it triggered a dramatic surge in mortgage defaults. This sent WAMU's financials into a tailspin. By September 2008, depositors, fearing the worst, had withdrawn approximately $16.7 billion in a 10-day bank run. The Office of Thrift Supervision, recognizing the severity of the situation, seized Washington Mutual and placed it into the receivership of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation (FDIC). This marked the largest bank failure in U.S. history. At the time of its collapse, Washington Mutual had assets worth $327.91 billion and $188.3 billion in deposits. J.P. Morgan Chase purchased the bank's deposits, assets, and some liabilities for a mere $1.9 billion. The downfall of Washington Mutual exposed the risks inherent in subprime lending and significantly contributed to the stricter regulations that followed. Today, Washington Mutual's downfall is a case study in risk management, or the lack thereof, and a testament to the far-reaching impacts of the financial crisis in 2008. We've reached the top spot, the largest American bankruptcy ever, Lehman Brothers Holdings, Inc. This investment bank's fall from grace signaled the beginning of the most severe economic downturn since the Great Depression. Founded in 1850, Lehman Brothers was a global financial services powerhouse. With a reputation built over more than a century, it was a titan on Wall Street, commanding respect and admiration. However, its empire was built on shaky ground. In the early 2000s, Lehman Brothers made a major push into mortgage-backed securities, betting heavily on the U.S. housing market. When the housing bubble burst, Lehman's fortunes took a dramatic nosedive. In the first half of 2008, Lehman reported losses of over $2.8 billion. The market lost confidence, its stock plummeted, and counterparties began to demand more collateral. A frantic search for a buyer or a bailout from the government proved fruitless. On September 15, 2008, Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. At the time, it held over $691.06 billion in assets, dwarfing every other bankruptcy in American history ever. Lehman Brothers collapse sent shockwaves through the global financial system. It was a catalyst for the Great Recession and led to a massive overhaul of financial regulations. Today, Lehman Brothers is a symbol of the financial crisis of 2008, a stark lesson in risk management and regulatory oversight. Its story serves as a cautionary tale for all financial institutions. Never miss a new video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad. Thanks for watching.